Shout out carpet tiles. Technical term, scud. Amazing detail. See you on the job. And we're out. Right, good morning. It's Monday morning. Welcome back. My name's Matt. Um, I've just spent oh, four, four and a half hours at a customer's house with the architect going through some plans for quite a large job, which I should be tagged in. Uh, probably in the next five, six weeks, I don't know. If you're the customer and you're watching this, don't hold me to that. Um, and um, yeah, this week I'll be fitting this set of wardrobes and I'll be fitting this bedroom furniture. They're all things that I've designed, made and fitted out of the workshop. Um, but before I do that, I've got to finish off the rest of today. So to finish off the rest of today, I'm going back to a previous customer's house and a previous job from last week and from other weeks where I'm just putting back down some old decking. It's a bit of an infill patch repair job. Um, so I've just got to nip to workshop, whack some heating on because I've got some things drying, which I've sorted out over the weekend. And I've then got to pick up some damp proof paint. Um, yeah, some bits and bobs. And then, yeah, jump on this decking. quite get it done. Um, if you're new, that happens a lot. If you're a returning viewer, um, you can probably guess where I'm going to go and get my kids because that is a large part of my day, unfortunately, not unfortunately, that I have to go and get the kids. Um, you know, I'm working down, that's what we do. Right, anyway, um, what didn't I get done? Well, I'll try and include in the time lapse. I was only there for a few hours. I'll also just quickly tell you, basically, that's not my normal line of work. That simply was, I was building, I was making some hardwood doors and hardwood shutters for that house, and I made a vanity unit for it. And in the process of fitting it, the customer was struggling with a hot tub that basically had an insurance claim on it. And they needed to get it removed, but the hot tub company wouldn't, I don't even know if they're paying for me actually, but they wouldn't actually um, remove the decking or the joystick. So I've been doing it. It was supposed to fall within when I was doing the work, but it hasn't done. Um, so anyway, obviously I've said I'll do it, so I'm doing it. So I'm nipping in as and when I can. Um, there's no apparent, there's no immediate rush to get the decking back down. And so that's why I'm fitting it in and around my week. Um, what didn't I get done? Well, that's tight quarter. No, what I didn't get done was I had to, I'll try and include it in the edit, but basically I left a very clear mark where that hot tub had to go back where the old one was and I even spoke to the people um, and they haven't followed it. So they're only, uh, in all due respect, they're about 10 or 12 mil out, so you know, whatever, it is what it is. Anyway, so what I've done is I've loose laid the decking to get to myself to a point because obviously if I just carried on laying the little planks and screwing them in, I can't just then hope that I'm going to fall with the cuts landing across the front because you, you, you know, like I said, I probably should do that anyway, and that's what I've done. But basically, if you progressively build it and just screw it in, four mil gap, uh, six mil gap, screw it in, six mil gap, whatever you put in on composite, if you do that, you could creep out, but you could even creep out of straightness, and then your cut might not go back through. So I kind of had to take an average and then just infill. And actually, as a top tip, it's a really good way of decking, doing decking. Measure your board, measure the average of your boards, add all your gaps up, take a random, take one of those measurements, times it, screw a board in, then backfill and work, eye in the gaps. Because if you try and do it, it's just a really good way to, to every now and then stop and keep it straight. Um, anyway, that's what I've done. 
then that's when I realised I was like actually there is something slightly out here so I had to re-trim one of the cuts the steps are slightly out but I think they've always been out and also the left hand side as you look at it has dropped significantly and I think when I'm thinking back when I took it all apart it looked like it was really leaning and one side wasn't and I remember the decking being pinched so what I did I can't put it back really like like that even though it's it was like it before I took it out so I just cut some fillets and blackjack them and so I've just tweaked I've just cheated it basically just to make it look a bit better but equally made it so it's sound as well I don't want to just you know what just like wedging it up with shims or whatever because it's got to last doesn't it so I've managed to get some fillets that had enough meat on them cut them back in there like I said blackjack them as well um what I and then I had to re-trim the service hatch because I've had to add extra timber in plus it was too tight anyway so I've got when I go back I've just got to infill all the screws take all the screws out the service hatch and drop that bit of decking back on the back which probably again wants trimming because the hot tub is slightly on the technical term scud right not sure how interesting that was but that is part of my day and that's what we're doing tomorrow we're going to be fitting these wardrobes as like that um and uh yeah try and make a bit of a show of that and then we've got some more to fit after that as well some more bedroom furniture so cue tomorrow well good morning it's tuesday morning um i've been in the workshop since about half seven um as you can see these set of wardrobes that have been there for a while they're gone now they're on the van doors are on the van everything that belongs to those wardrobes is on the van everything else you can see is for the second install later on in the week um i hope <laughs> unless i've missed something i'll just take you through um so normally let's come back in actually normally i just have that door open and that's what so my goods in if you like i'll pre bring in through that door over there because all my racks over there um ex excuse the mess just how it is um this is all stuff left over from when i was doing ripping my wife's shop out christmas boxes the flu from the log but there's so much but normally i just go out that door of everything but this morning I just went out this little pedestrian door. Um, so on the van, hopefully the wind isn't going to destroy this uh, footage. But you can see I've got like a, a perfectly flat, like um, carpeted sort of um, base. And I've got these 1700 long sustainer drawers. Well, that's sustainers and that's consumables. Then with some like a little man drawer and some levels and bits and bobs. Table saw and the um, miter saw and other bits and bobs, hoover and all that, that's on the other door with another little pull through bit. Um, but basically, for a long time I was bubble wrapping all my material. Um, it's just unnecessary, it causes more problems than it's worth. Uh, and I also think it's not really the best thing to be doing, is it? Bubble wrapping, you know, going through no end of plastic, just wrapping something up for a small journey. So what I do now is I either use storage blankets or I've gone through this before, these carpet tiles, because actually you can pad them as you want and um, lay things. You can just be clever with how you stack. I mean, I've got, there's quite a lot on the van there. All the bits you see that are just laying loose, apart from these, which I'll put a sheet on in a minute, they're, um, they're just bits to go on infills, so they're not of any real use. Um, so it doesn't matter if they, get, you know, if they move around, but everything else, and you can see what else I do, is I roll up the carpet tiles and then stick them into openings and they sort of self-expand again, and then that just wedges things in place. Uh, it works really, really well. And most importantly, if I get to the job, which actually I am doing now, when I get to the job, I won't film this bit, I've got to take care of the plinth detail because you can't put legs on this wardrobe because I had to keep it so tight to the floor because we don't want it to become, we've got to fit a drawer in there and the doors so when you get to the second rail. If I had to put wardrobe feet on it, we'd be starting too high up and it wouldn't work. So this one's going really tight to the floor. So there aren't legs on the market that will do that. Um, even the Hayfley ones with the Ujima flop. So I'm going very tight to the floor. So I'm going to cut, and it's on a hard floor. Uh, I've worked out with the joist I'm just going to cut solid pieces of timber on the table saw or portable skill saw. Um, but advantage is, I can do that before I get all the materials out. That's why I like this system, because I can get to all my tools. There's not one tool I can't get to now. And I think anyone that does this knows how frustrating it is when you've got a sheet of something leaning up against your tool rack or whatnot. So that works for me. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is, second part of the week is filming these, and I'm actually going to go through the detail of how I fit those to carpet. So I appreciate I'm not going to go through the detail of how I fit this one because it's unusual. But this would be my standard detail on carpet because most of my bedroom furniture is on carpet. So I'm actually going to include that detail. Um, a subscriber actually commented I should do it. So I'm going to do it. Thanks, Dan.
Um, yeah, cool. Right, so I'll see you at the job. I'm probably, probably not going to be able to pick up the camera until about half 10, 11, realistically, by the time I get loaded out. Maybe even later, I don't know. But we'll, we'll still get a fair bit done today. Well, fingers crossed. Right, cool. See you in a bit. Just missed opportunity there to do a bit of filming magic. Um, so we're just going to redo that last little bit. I don't normally do this. So basically, yeah, um, this is a good opportunity just for me to you know grab last minute essentials. I've gone upstairs, made sure I've got everything I need, like the hinges, things like that. Just check my toolboxes, make sure I've got them. Right, see you on the job. And we're out. believe that would take all day would you um but it has uh, it's got in pretty well though to be fair um you know really realistically i suppose it's not all day because obviously i've been to the workshop loaded up then i actually went home had a coffee and um had a little bit of a sit down and a chat with my wife um you know and just sort of a bit of a more of a relaxed approach but i sort of i knew i'd never get this done in a day i've done a couple of installs now where i've done it in a day probably nothing to this scale if you've got help you can do it in a day but it's all the scribing that's you know it's going to put me back and you can see what i've done this cornice that i made up i've the time i spent this morning was i was doing lots of lasering and measuring and working out so that i could get these two green buttons on the wall moisture resistant 25 mm mdf one going that way and i've got one going that way so i can fix that way and that way gives me a bit of a gap for the wardrobe as well just keep, let it breathe and cutting some solid timber so if you look, if 
we can pick that up. But you can see I've got some solid um, CLS actually, it goes all the way down there. You probably can't quite see it. If you look down there, you can just see on the end there, I've got it with the angle bracket on. So that's got, um, yeah, it's a solid timber all the way along. And I've managed to get that to land on the joist. And then I've got that at the right height. I had to plane that to suit so that when I dropped that cabinet on, because that but that drawer box, because you don't want really that to be on packers. You want that to be solid and level. And then it just meant that when I slid those on, I had a bit of a plan around with that one. I don't know if there's a bit of out of square or something, I'm not sure. But yeah, I've got it right now anyway. Um, and now, unfortunately, I couldn't get a baton on that wall. It will fit in there, but it's too bent the wall. So I've had to just put packers on. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go round with some shims and offcuts. Of, I've got a little box there with offcuts of um, like some like birch ply shims, some MDF shims, just offcuts that I've ran through the panel saw so like out of smaller bits. And I'll just throw those in the gaps and basically screw through from behind the hinges or um, if I have to put, I'm going to have to put a couple of fixings in that side because really I don't like the idea of this being free. I, I, I want at least a few fixings down there into the wall, same there. I mean, obviously this side would be fully supported, but I'll just have to put some veneer stickers on it. I try to limit all the fixings inside the cupboards because I just think it looks nice without it, especially with the veneer board. Ideally, these wardrobes would have been suited to using the Festool, I think it's Clamex connector, Festool connector, sorry. Um, no, I've got the domino, I could have done it. But I don't like seeing the fixings inside the wardrobes. But if I could have built that in place, I wouldn't have had to mess around taking the lampshade off. That's what slowed me down. There's obviously there's been a bit of a misunderstanding about how much room I want, if I'm being honest. Um, but basically, I kind of really, that, you know, I did sort of offered last night to come and help. But I think it was all a bit late when they were moving the wardrobes. And, you know, who wants me in their house at that time of night? So I appreciate that. Um, but there's no one really around to help today. So I've just shout out carpet tiles. They're brilliant. Just whip them upside down, put your furniture on them. That's what I've done with the bed as well. When I move, and you can just move stuff around and it won't scratch. Um, they're just like great big felt pads, really. But yeah, it means I can move the wardrobe. I can't get out of the room. And I, you can sort of, I don't know how this, if this camera's picking it up, but basically, like, by the time I laid the wardrobe down, it actually came to here. And then I had to stand it up to get into there. Obviously, I had to take all that off to make it work. You know, and then the same thing on that side, which meant I had to move the bed, and move the wardrobe back again. Um, just that takes time. To be honest with you, it's a bit of a ball like getting stuff up as well. It's a long old trip. Um, but I've got everything up here. Uh, I've got some stuff out on the hallway now. It's all if the van is completely empty. Other than my jigsaw, I've got everything I need to finish tomorrow in here. So what I'm thinking is I might just send a message and just say, if we can just get the knickknacks away or because i can't put, i've got polythene on the van but i can't put it over that or maybe i can actually yeah i just worry about all the knickknacks putting polythene over it and then when you take the polythene off knocking something over but anyway um what i'm gonna do now because it is it's pretty much home time but i'm just gonna pack all those out now just so in the morning i'm just scribing and they've actually given me some extra work as well uh, which i haven't seen yet i'll just look out tomorrow describing in some kitchen i think their dad's done the kitchen or done bits to the kitchen but he hasn't done the basically the chippy bits like the scribing in putting the handles on it hasn't fitted some of the units either i haven't actually looked but i'll look tomorrow as long as i've got my tools with me i'll be able to do it um i might it'd be nice to get that done get this finished because then that kind of makes up for the lost you know for the, the lost sort of time really if i get a bit of extra work but yeah and then it'd be on fitting the other wardrobes firstly that's the plan anyway right i'll see you in the morning
All right then, job complete. Uh, here I am, the man, the myth, the legend, just showing you that I've achieved the bare minimum after X amount of workshop hours and two days of install. I've got a door to open and shut, so well done, Matt. Um, yeah, as you can see, all soft close. And then over on this side here, exactly the same except uh bigger you can see that left hand door that's the door in question it's a little bit smaller and the inside of that door has not quite been finished off because there's a mirror going on that so when the doors are shut you might notice it if you really look in but basically that right hand door is about 10 mil bigger than the left hand door just so it sneaks in there against the radiator um the curtain rail does have to be moved because what we want to achieve is that door to open past 90 degrees um, and I've made the frame to suit a curtain rail you can get that will all make a curtain fit in there. And that's purely because as the doors open, we're going to put a mirror just here. That was a good timing, wasn't it, Matt? And we need it to be, oh, I've missed off the nine, over the 90 degrees. That's what I was trying to get at. All right, good morning. It's Thursday morning. Uh, I've been to the workshop already this morning and loaded up for today's job. Well, this the next job, which won't be done in a couple of days. This one, um, everything but the painted components. Right. So yesterday's video, I don't know how I'm going to piece that together because unfortunately they are having a meeting as I was finishing. I didn't film everything I did because I said I had these other jobs to do. When it came to me finishing the wardrobes at the end of the day, um, yeah, the lady she does like editing and stuff herself, so. I knew I couldn't make any noise really. Um, so I'll, I'll have to do a talk over or something. But basically, two issues with that job. Um, like lots of little minor niggles, but you always get those and it's all in and looks good now. But the two main issues were, from day one, I knew it was gonna be tight to clear that radiator. I knew the curtain rail was getting changed. I've got it to work. I had to offset the door, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I think I've already mentioned this. I had to make the door 10 mil smaller. Um, it's not like I made it and cut the door down by 10 mil. It's all tailored and made to suit. And the way it works in the room, you don't see it. Um, but I had to tell the customer. I just thought, last minute, I just thought, I'm going to tell him. Because I had to get it right in my own mind that I was 100% right. Now, if I'd have opened the door and it had cleared the radiator by 10, 15 mil, I'd have remade it. Um, or if it wanted me to, I would have done. But as I got it all together, leveled the wardrobe, got it all on, it was clear, I only just cleared the radiator. Um, and then that is why there, there's supposed to be a mirror on the inside of that door and I, I, I halted ordering the mirror because of that. I've now ordered it, that will be made today and I'll get that fitted. And I've got to fit the wardrobe rounds because I've got to confirm the location. So the job's done. That was one minor issue, which is no longer an issue. You know, it's things like that, they can sit heavy on your mind because you've made that decision. And when you're in the workshop, you don't want to bring the customer up and explain all of this. Because A, you know, two weeks on, I'm still not very good at explaining it, let alone over the phone to somebody. In sort of like a lame, you don't know what their understanding of it is. Um, so I just sort of made the decision to do it. It's why you get paid, you know, it's what, why we do what we do. You know, we have to make certain decisions. Um, second issue, there's such a thing called Sod's Law. Um, so basically, I don't know how to put this, but I've, so on the start of that uh, install, I was in the workshop and I was talking about how I keep my ball flat, so I've never had any problems. You might notice on some of the time lapse, I've obviously I'm put it together yet, I don't know if it'll show. I think I spent nearly an hour getting the doors on that left hand wardrobe because one of them was, um, how you put it, bowed to fuck, basically. Um, so what I know that. You know, I've shown it, it and it's carpeted and it is it ain't in there for a minimal amount of time but obviously the van will move a bit but it won't cause the door to bow because they're weighed down. Um, so it's not that. The only other thing I can think is what I normally do, that house was so tight for space. That was like pictures off the wall, furniture moved from the hallway just to try and get up and around the winding staircase into the room which then I had to move it. it was, Honestly, that took so much longer than it needed to because I was constantly, it was like a giant game of bloody, uh, what do you call it, where you move the blocks, you know. Um, yeah, so just a big massive puzzle to get that together. I couldn't find anywhere to lay them doors flat and I had to unload them off the van, get them into like, you know, 
into room temperature as such. And what I do in that instance is I've got two old six foot levels, which is straight, and I, um, I clamp my doors to them, stand them up. And I haven't done that in that instance. I stood them up, they were, and I make sure they're standing up straight because I sort of clamp them, you know, in amongst stuff. And I'd left all the stuff up there to do it, and I'd actually, three of them were perfect, but the one that was kind of facing the, the, the hallway, I guess like, because it wasn't leaning on, it had no weight of the others on it, which were bang flat, I think it just curled a bit. It was a lot though, a hell of a lot. But thankfully, I put five hinges on all my wardrobe doors, regardless of height, really. Obviously, if they're not, if they're small, but tall wardrobe doors, I put five hinges on. Um, it's overkill. On those wardrobes, it was not that much overkill to be fair. I think they needed to be five when you look at the chart, but it's always five anyway. And that is because if you put one in the middle, you've got a better chance with and the ones on the corners of bringing it back in. Um, and then you've got the extra ones. Um, I did manage to get it back, but I had to I had to cheat things a little bit to, to get it back. Um, I had to twi cheat both doors, and actually, thankfully, I've got quite strong magnets on the top and the bottoms of the doors. And thankfully, during the process of me doing that, um, it kind of straightened itself out anyway. Even me just sort of over bowing it back, if you like, it ended up being bob on in the end. But even then, I was showing the customer. The customer came in, and I couldn't hide it. Like my face, obviously, I could can hide the doors because I'll get them right or I'll just remake it. It's only work. But um, yeah, he was like, everything all right? And I was like, no, I'm really struggling with this door. I don't mind admitting it. And um, we went through it in that. And then when he came back an hour or so later, we shut the door and you could see even it was, it, looking down it, it was dead flat again. So that was a relief really. That's just, thank God I've got, I put the strong magnets on. Thank God I put the five hinges on because four hinges on that door, I think I'd have been remaking the door. Yeah, waffle, waffle, waffle. Um, I've just got a nip to uh, tool station because I've just, I've literally just spoke to the electrician who's at, who's at the job I'm starting. He's got to move some sockets. He needs me there to tell him where to move them to, but also he hasn't got the face fixed sockets that go on the floor for whatever reason. He doesn't keep those on his van. So I've got to go get those, go back and meet him. Uh, then he's chucking it down, but I've got to try and clear space, load out, do all that. I bet it won't be midday until I pick you up again. Well, and I'm going to go home and have a cup of coffee as well. Just um, sort a couple of bits out on the old computer. Just take them in it as well. Um, but when I do, I'll show you how I cut and install them into the carpet. And then we'll just get where we get on this week on this video, on, on, on these in wardrobes. I mean, really, I'd lo I wanted to get there yesterday afternoon, you see, and load out. But yeah, such is. I still, still book the electrician for Thursday anyway. So it's always going to be started sort of late on Thursday so I'm not exactly behind but I guess it's just your own sort of standards really it's your own sort of timings you put on things which is often a thing I know everyone comes across that you put un sometimes an unnecessary amount of pressure on yourself but then equally you might have a customer in the background that's equally putting pressure on you as well um, right I'll speak to you in a bit right that's it we're at the job now um i've loaded out started you know getting on with it met the electrician not actually going to tell you what the time is because it's been an absolute mare but anyway we're all loaded out we're all ready to go so i've cut the carpet now I'm, I'm going through this because someone mentioned on one of my videos that basically do i remove the carpet before i fit you know big wardrobes and the short answer is yes um, there are the odd instance, I don't think I've done any on any of my videos where I haven't removed the carpet, but there is the odd instance where if you're putting a small unit in, you could possibly not remove the carpet. I did do some a couple of years ago where the bloke didn't want me to, he wanted to make it look like it was freestanding even though it was fitted. But they were monster wardrobes. It was a pain, but you know, we got it right. Um, the problem being is if you don't remove the carpet, some stage when the carpet gets redone, then your furniture's underneath the carpet, and then when you cut, when the carpet fitter cuts it back, that's going to then start moving around. Um, and also, you know, even if you go on top of the carpet, you're never saving that carpet because if that fitted furniture is there for years, it just leaves a mark on the carpet. There's no two ways about it. Um, so what I like to do is I like to make a frame up. Sometimes I make this in ply MDF. In this case, it's just a CLS frame, um, and basically. I make that up the size of my carcasses. So that will be my, my, my wardrobe comes to, and then my drawer set will finish there. Um, and very similar to a kitchen 
cabinet, I'll finish slightly inside. So if you imagine my cupboard will just sort of finish maybe about here. Um, so the weight is, 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 most of it's taking it. There's like four or five mil overhang. That's simply just to give myself a little bit of room when I cut the carpet. And then on top of that, I then have my end panel going down. So my end panels will be cut to the carpet and they'll actually be pinning the carpet down, you know, somewhat. I like to get a lot of weight on there because if they ever do replace the carpet, you don't want that to be a, a gap. Um, and then the front of my units, I do slightly different. I create like an overhang. Again, similar to a kitchen, I suppose. Um, and I utilize that overhang for housing my lighting connections drivers. Um, so it's quite a big overhang. It's about, uh, well, the size of that basically, plus another 10 mil. Um, and then basically these mount on here and I can run my cables to where I need to go. In this instance, I could just run, I could just put my drivers inside here and run my cables through this notch because I am gonna have to put some cables through the notch anyway. But there are some instances where you don't have drawers at the bottom of units. So same here, I've got drawers in this unit. But if this was a solid bottom wardrobe, you'd never get to this bit. So you need to have them on the outside just in case anything ever goes wrong. So this will finish, I think it's about 70 mil back. And then to cover this gap, I have a, I've been through this on other videos, and if you watch my stuff, you'll realize it's a system I've started you know, developing. Basically, like a click on oak veneer plinth. It doesn't matter if I'm painting the cabinet or not, I still do it in like an oak veneer plinth because it just creates like a nice shadow. Like in the, these instances, it is painted, yes, it just creates a nice shadow line. When you open the door, just something of a little bit of interest. And then that gets scribed down and again, pinched on top of the carpet. So that basically hides your carpet cut line. Now, although that doesn't look too bad, well, I've cut that. I mean, it's not perfect, is it? It is, it is an art in itself, cutting a carpet and tucking it back in. Um, so it's just a, another way of doing it, really, where I'm guaranteed to get a solid fix in and I don't have to, on the day, because, you know, already I've had an electrician here all more, well, all day, pretty much. Um, I don't really want to involve a carpet fitter as well if I can take care of it myself. Um, and basically... What I have done in the past is you can, I'll put a link up on the screen, you can buy these little legs that you fit onto your, um, onto your like plinth if you like. I've sort of stopped using those because in this instance I probably could have got away with it because I've got a joist here, a joist here and a joist there. But really you don't want to be um, sort of putting any extra pressure on the middle of a floorboard, you want to be spreading the weight. So I just make a solid frame and I'll go around and I'll shim that and I'll use angle brackets and stuff to secure it so it won't move that way. And I can even use the angle, bracket, angle brackets to give me a little bit of extra strength, but I'll simply solid pack it essentially and then fix it to the floor. Because in, you know, especially older houses, when you walk into a room, the floor will start bouncing. So I sort of stiffen this area of the floor up with this. Um, yeah, to be honest with you, ply works just as well because by the time you've done it you've actually um, or even mdf you've actually fixed back down to the floor so it's absolutely fine and then inside the drawers i can go along i can screw my drawer to this framework uh, inside the wardrobes what i do i'll see if i've got one actually in my box yeah, i haven't actually got any up here in the room i'm not going back downstairs again basically you could use uh, like small stretcher plates. In this case, I'm just demonstrating an angle bracket. So if you can't get a fixing in the bottom of the wardrobe because there's no drawers, let's just say this was a display unit like the far end one is, you could actually mount these to the front, you know, one there and one there, and then just get your angle driver bit up just to get like a 20 mil screw into the bottom of the cabinet. Just gives, just stops it from, you know, sort of swimming around really. Um, right, I'll show you the other side because the other side is much the same. Yeah, so that's the other side. It's pretty much exactly the same. Obviously, I've still got to mount the electrical box. The electrician's just sort of got them in the right place. Um, but yeah, exactly the same situation. Basically, what's happened is it's about four o'clock now. There was an electrical fault, which we sort of knew about. It's been an ongoing thing here. because so I've been at this house um, quite a few times. On the home now, yeah. So basically, yeah, it's gone for, gone scoring. Um, and basically, I sort of got roped into helping with the fault because things needed removing from walls and stuff and 
holes needed cutting in just to try and find where it is and it did that it was actually on this side of the this, this ring main on this side of the house so it just made sense while i was going into this um for yeah him to do it um but he the kind of the plan was that he was going to get all this prepared which he has done and then get the power back on get all that tested and i could work away but because like i said i just i just helped him out he was actually it's been ages gone about half hour ago so it's been a mad day really anyway hopefully i can get this wardrobe together i've got to level this hopefully i can get this wardrobe together now offer that up and then show you the plinth detail just to show you in a little bit more amazing detail cool right so all the cabinets are in leveled squared fixed to the wall um they're like they're, they're absolutely rock solid which is what you want um so the whole point of this is to basically show you how i'm fitting to carpets because there was a comment about you know what do you do? do do you remove the carpet so i've sort of gone through what i've done thus far you can see how neat the carpet line is against this um solid plinth so you could actually fix the plinth to that but i take advantage of this void so I, I try and make it as big as possible for airflow to fit my led light drivers and what i'll probably do with these is fix them up to underneath there just to give myself a little bit more room around the connections but anyway they fit in there nice 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 and neat then what you can do is you can get all your monochromatic um clicking connectors you can get those your connector strips each to each to each light point which is where i'm going to run the led light strip i've got one on here and then in and then there's another one underneath there's another one underneath the drawers and then in here that it will go back through there's like a feed hole i'm not sure if the camera's picking that up but there's a feed hole just here which goes back through to my sockets which are in there so this one will go through there and it will come through the back of the cupboard into the desk um well i'll show you that in a minute i'm just trying to do a close-up of this so then what you do is you take your veneer board your plinth which goes on these dominoes or biscuits however you want to do it or lamello you can see obviously i've overcut it because i want to scribe it to the floor quite often you can just cut square cut um straight cut it because the carpet takes any undulations um this one you can see which i've cut if you can see that i've had to put a bit of a bow um bit of an angle on it because it's uh, a bit of a sweep in it because there's a hump in the floor so it is handy to do them long and then scribe them in so you basically offer that on scribe what you normally would um and then you're sort of left with this piece here which you don't have to do mega tight and you can see how neat that is to the carpet um anything that's sort of this size and then the face frames they overhang by a mill or so they come down here you see um anything this sort of height what i have been doing is i've been of a pocket screwing or might might have made in a block on the back just once i've fixed where my lights and that go just so you know you can't kick it in um and i tend to just put a little bit of silicon around the dominoes just so later on let's just say one of the connectors goes or the drivers go or maybe even when the light strips go and you want to change it it's just simply off you come obviously you'd be doing it from the top with a chisel and that's why i put the silicon on there so it sort of holds on in that time but then equally you can remove it whereas pva it'll obviously split the back of the veneer and whatnot um yeah so i hope that's clear um because that's basically the best i can do <laughs> right um okay so uh, I'll show you the cabinets um, fixed to the wall for whatever whatever um, use that is to people. But basically, I've got a uh, solid timber all the way down there, solid timber down there, which I've managed to screw into level, and then I've got my infills, which are over here. Uh, is that an infill there's one on the floor which is a bit bigger and there's one up here which again a dominoes is that the right one yeah that's dominoes to go onto there and i over i, I make those more than big enough because in this instance we've got a middle laptop drawer and that um to hide like paperwork in a laptop when the lad's working at the desk very similar so if those that um those that know i won't include anything else to this room is one I've already done um, you can see he's got his computer and stuff in there and he pushes it to open that drawer and gets the laptop out 
But yeah, it looks, looks nice now it's done. Um, I'm not gonna have to go in there. I've got pictures of that on Instagram anyway. Um, yeah, basically, so what I do is, see, that is how quick I go off, off topic, that's mad. Basically, I level it, get it about right, level it, get it about right, and then I fine tweak the margins and move it over from each way, keeping it straight in line, not a nice perfect line, um, so it's all completely in wind using the laser level actually on the windowsill or a string line, whatever you've got. Um, and then until I get the right measurement for my drawer, which I've made with the runners and stuff on, I sort of keep closing that gap up and then the desk gets scribed in afterwards. Everything just gets made big and scribed on site. That's, that's basically how I do it. Which is what takes the time to be honest with you. Um, so what I should be doing now is connecting all these lights up. Well, I'll be doing that in the morning, sorry. Connecting all these lights up. Um, and then I can put all my plimps on and then I can put all the drawers in and the doors on, which are already pre... Sorry about that. They're already pre-done. So therefore, they're going to be... They're going to go on ever so quick. However, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do that because I know that I'm not going to get this finished this week. I'm going to have to come back next week. So I'm just going to come back next week to do the lights and the fine uh, fine tuning. And also, I might have ordered the wrong amount of leads for the um, for the uh, for the lights. I might have done, I might not. I'll let you decide whether I've done that or not. But there is a reason why I'm not fitting the lights now. Right. See you in the morning. Well, good morning. It's Friday morning. Um, I can't believe it's Friday already. I really can't. But it is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite happy with how Tuesday and Wednesday went that install. I know I had the problem with the bow door, which I sort of spoke about, but I didn't actually um, document when it happened. It's not out of sort of, I don't know, it's not really out of like embarrassment or anything. It was just more sort of like I was just frustrated at the time because I've never really had a door that I've made bow like that. Um, I'm normally so anal about how I store them, but just took my eye off the ball, I guess. Um, which is possibly because I was giving it the bigger the day before about how I store stuff, but anyway. We sorted it, it's all done. And actually, the customer messaged me last night, and I don't expect this, I never expect it, you're getting paid, but they, they messaged me just to sort of say, thanks very much, they're over the moon. Um, it's always nice when you get it. You, to be fair, it, most people are really courteous and they do message that as like a separate message. Um, but it's just lovely, it is. Uh, and obviously I didn't get a chance to speak to them properly when I left because they were in meetings. So I've got, I've got to go back and do the rails in the mirror, which I'm actually picking up in a bit. Then this morning, I haven't, because I know now I'm a little bit behind on this job, I've not really, I'll, if I thought I was going to get it done today, I'd have been up really early in the workshop loading up. But I didn't. I thought, well, I'm still going to have to come back in next week. So um, we'll just take our time a little bit. Um, and then guess what's happened? I've gone to go to the workshop and all the roads are flooded. So I'm in the sort of Kim Bolton, Tilbrook area. I'm not going to get my exact location now. But um, yeah, if anyone knows that area, it's very flat and um, yeah, day and a night of rain and it has non stop rained and the roads just can't take it. Um, so I've had to do a really long loop round to get to the workshop. It's cost it and I don't even, I mean, now even looking at that brook down the side of the road yeah i don't even know i mean i know from here i think i'll get there i've never had it where i can't get to work um but yeah anyway so i'm gonna do that then i'm gonna nip into the nearest town pick up that mirror pick up the rails and stuff get to the job just take our time a little bit more today i think um i don't know how much it's come across this week how hard i've worked but i have actually worked quite hard this week um and i think i suppose really because you've got to remember it's a damn one-man band. I'm doing like trying to get all my quotes and everything done. I'm getting so much work coming in, so much. Um, I'm just trying to get all that done. I'm sort of sorting. I'm on two other jobs. I'm trying to sort out which I'm not really filming. Um, so yeah, it's just taking a bit of my time really. So filming's perhaps suffered a little bit. I'm just trying to pick up on what people are suggesting. So if you've got any um, suggestions, actually put them forward. And I'll I'll document it really. Um, the next job I'm doing actually, the next install job I'm doing, is completely different to anything I've ever done. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, but as a positive, the customer who I'm at now, the job I've just, um, this uh, bedroom furniture I'm fitting now, that customer messaged me um, just to say, oh hi, just make sure we're still on for Thursday, you know, which was yesterday. And I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll be there, definitely. And I just thought, 
So what I like to try to do is I always like try to have a bit of humour with everyone. So I just think it, it breaks the ice. Um, and you know then how your relationship's going to go going forward. Most people, uh, and I'd say, yeah, most people just want to have a laugh. Um, they want their job doing properly, obviously, and you know, why, which is why you're being employed. And they want you as well to stand there with the same set of eyes as them. They don't want you to stand there. I know some tradesmen, they'll stand there with a different set of eyes, going, oh yeah, that's all right. I know you've all got the same set of eyes. Look at it together, just be honest. Um, if you're honest, most people will talk to you like, you know, and I thought, I'll just give it a go. I said, just to warn you, I might be a bit cranky because I've just spent the best part of two days walking like a crab around this bedroom in between dresses and beds and all sorts and wardrobes trying to like, you know, get these things installed. So the clearest you can get that room, the, you know. Straight away he was like, yeah, absolutely understand. We've already cleared loads of it. And he laughed. Um, and uh, yeah, actually it made yesterday's video, yesterday's install, sorry, it made it so easy so thanks a lot for doing that it really appreciate I really, you know and that's not taking anything away from tuesday and wednesday's customer because that was that was really i've got to own that i wasn't very clear years ago i used to say get all the knickknacks out get all the bits and bobs out because that's what slows me down and i just wasn't a hunt when i first looked at it the room seemed massive and i just wasn't that bothered and they're in the process of moving and then i looked in the spare room and i was there yesterday um so they're talking about moving some stuff into there. Oh my God, there's so much stuff. That I just thought, bless them, they've moved as much as they can. Um, you know, if you physically, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle. If you haven't got the room, um, yeah, so, and I, and I always offer to help, I do. But again, communication wasn't the best. And I have to accept responsibility for that. You just have to hold your hands up and just go, well, I should have been a bit firmer about my communication, about how I was going to help. Anyway, waffle, waffle, waffle. It's basically Friday afternoon. It's t it took me to about 11 o'clock to get here. Then obviously I had to get all my stuff out and stuff and I started working. I actually started cutting those bits in because I only cut that one in last night. So I started cutting those plinths in. Just about to start doing the scribe for the frame and then the school rang. I had to go take my middle kid to his nan's. He's not very well. He hasn't been well for a while, but we I basically took him bowling last night for his football team and I think we just wiped him out. So I had to go sort that out. The customers were really good about it. In fact, they've got kids in the same class. So they're great about it. Um, also, technically, I'm actually ahead of schedule because I should have been here next week, really. But I brought things forward, so they're all cool. It's just a bit of a ball ache. I always knew I was going to have to be here next week, so I just now I just think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of filming on these scribes. It's just about to start scribing. I thought I better film it. I'm going to do a little bit of filming on these scribes, have a little bit of a chat, which um, yeah, which you think you'll know will take about an hour for me to talk and get me thoughts out. Um, yeah, and then then yeah, just a little shot of where I got to on the end of the day, I guess mad i can't believe it it's not it's no drama i mean it's just like yeah uh yeah sometimes it just goes like this you know anyway speak to you in a bit
so done. Well, it's not, is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's as far as I've got. It's actually happened to me last time. Um, it was two half days, and that's what I've had this time, two half days. But, you know, it's just be this house, or me. But basically, yeah, what I was trying to say was, what I do is I domino these, um, like, so they end up being flush. But when I domino them in the workshop, say, I think I cut that piece out 80 mil, I also domino the other side in exactly the same position. Um, so then I can just click it on, so it's offset the basically the thickness of the the thickness of the infill less the thickness of the pan that's going it's going on. So you could use the U-scrub jig, but which I did have years ago. I have one, but that was before they sort of developed it to be for twenty two and different things. And sometimes I offset like that last job I did Tuesday and Wednesday. My in frames, my frames were inset by 20, 18 mil, so I could use the Blum 18 mil mountain spacers, or the grass, or whatever you want to use. Um, yeah, basically, you know, it works. Um, it's just a system you sort of, I've come up with. It means I can work hands-free and scribe, because that's the hardest thing often, is you sort of, I mean, these aren't so bad, because you can just clamp these, clamp these to it, and then you can, like, you know, same sort of thing, you, you bring it out that way, and whatever the distance is, you just scribe it in. But um, yeah, when it's when it's going on that way, it's quite awkward to keep it in position and without it then moving this way. If that makes sense. So as it goes on, it's all right. It's all very well having it on, but it can't go on in the position you describe it. In, so you need to hold it off. So I've done it before. I've just put the dominoes on and held it up to the dominoes, and that's normally enough. But then I just thought one day, I thought, why not just whack some extra dominoes in it? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's one of those, isn't it? Really, where I probably could have, probably could have got a little bit more done. Yeah. yeah so what have I got left? Uh, to be honest with you, the drawers, they wouldn't take long to do, because other than those ones, I've actually had them all in and sort of levelled them. I have got to screw the fronts on, but with these, you've got the advantage of you can just get your clamp in there and get it in. Sometimes you can't, like well, all the time normally with drawers, you've, you've just got the margin, the two and a half mil gap of the drawer. You can get special clamps actually that go in that margin. And I had a pair um, and they just buckle. That's the problem. After like so many uses, they get like really, they like open out. Um, I don't know. I just find it just as easy just to pre-drill a couple of, couple of holes in your drawer box, pop some screws through like and stick them out four or five mil and just push it on or you can use a bit of mitre mate just to get you somewhere near but yeah i find that just as just as effective as those clamps i always find it moves a little bit anyway and you've got the adjustment on the um got the adjustment on these drawing this they're basically the copy of the blum ones not too dissimilar to the grass but more of a copy of the blum they're by hafley uh hafley metal or something right so they're actually really really good i really like them and i like their hinges as well which i think i've said um, so what we've got to do, so basically we've got to get the drawers in, that won't take long. We've got to get those shelves up. I picked up some uh, 12 mil threaded rod for those. I'm just going to resin bar them because I had a problem with the next door. Um, get all those made up. Obviously I've got to fit the lights. That will take a little bit of time. That just does, you know, it takes as long as it does to do the connections and stuff. Um, yeah, go around, silicon it in. Um, I think that's it. I right, put the oak backings in oh, and I've got a uh, I basically I made this top a little bit big so I could scribe it into the wall because you always get this with freestanding furniture you always get this awful detail of it butting up to the skirting board and I knew there was a plug socket there so I have these great big Alexa plugs so what I'll do is I'll bring it away I'll speak to them if they want me to I'll bring it away and I can get that top into the corner at least not scribed in all the way around but at least it'll you know it'll look a bit better than it just bouncing around in the corner you see what I mean yeah right um that's it if you're still here thanks very much